showed up to this guy's house and he said, yeah, I have the human skeleton, but you have to come in to get it. While I was doing this, I was texting my brother saying like, call me in five minutes. If I don't answer, here's the address. My name is Ryan Matthew Cohen. I'm an artist, curator, collector, and professional weirdo. I think um, my interest in the morbidity of the world uh, started to evolve when I was around maybe 15 or 16 when I got my first skull. Here's a really unique one. This is a Peruvian elongated skull from Nazca, Peru. It's probably around 1500 years old. What is done is at childbirth, the uh, tribes would take this, the baby's skull and wrap it in twine and do what's known as uh, cradle boarding. And what it would do is slowly grow into a conical shape that you see here. Um, people believe these to be aliens, but it was more of like a, a tribal thing. I love this skull. This is every tooth in the human head. And we have just like different trays of each tooth. There are about 10,000 of them or something. I mean, everyone needs one of these, right? We also have a lot of early surgical instruments. Most of these are 19th century Civil War era. One thing that I always look for is early trephination devices. So these would have been used to literally bore a hole into the head. One of my favorite pieces in the entire collection is this one right here. It's certainly the most visual, but also one of the most rare. Uh, it's from around 1856 or so, 1857. It's signed by the original artist, uh, Paul Zeiler. What it's showing is the human body splayed out. So you have the nerves, veins, and arteries, as well as full organs, the muscular system. These other two pieces, they would be referred to as an oversized anatomical model and be used in anatomical theater of the 19th century, where you know a teacher would be teaching a class and so that everyone could see what you know, was being taught. When you first walk into the space, you'll notice that we have a lot of death masks. A death mask would have been taken uh, post-death from whatever individual is being taken from, and it was used as a form of memento mori, or remembrance of the dead. We have Napoleon's death mask. Uh, this was taken from the actual Napoleon years ago. We have Beethoven over here, so if you've ever really wanted to know what Beethoven looked like, Here's your chance, you can see them in wax. Uh, this particular one was made in the 19th century. As you start coming in, you start seeing more of the medical influence. And there was actually a time where um, cadavers were illegal. Um, so you know, there was all these stories where cadavers were, or you know, dead bodies were being dug up and sold to medical schools so that they could study. Artisans and anatomists were working very closely together to create different ways to study the human body. This collection came from um, a collection that was known as Castin's Panopticon. Uh, Panopticon was sort of this natural history meets science meets um, almost like Madame Tussauds Wax Museum. So it had famous people from the time. I think they opened up in around 1870 and they were in operation until around 1922. As you come through here, you can see our uh, fetal abnormalities, and this is definitely something that you don't typically see at a bar. So these were used by midwives to study what that would look like, um, and actually some of the causes of death that would occur from childbirth. We have so many forms to study the human body. People are dying all the time from things like syphilis. You'll see uh, in the collection, there's a lot of syphilis pieces, and those were used to teach people what syphilis looked like, and ultimately it was to teach uh, people in the medical field how to treat this because it was a huge killer of people in the 19th century. This is showing different forms of uh, leprosy and lupus. I mean, who doesn't want to see that while they're having a drink? What I've always done is I've celebrated the history of medicine and anatomy. And I think that's in many ways what my collection uh, is about and certainly what House of Wax is about. I feel really honored to have saved many of the pieces that I've saved. <laughs>
I think they're incredibly important to the history um, of medicine. And I, I think even though they might be grisly or hard to look at, they're important to show the progress that we've made. The greatest satisfaction I have in life is when someone comes here and they just want to learn about it just as much as I do or hear the stories that I have.